Hello and welcome to Photoshop Figure Painting with Andrew Theophilopoulos. Today I'm painting an Adobe Photoshop on a Cintiq Companion. Two brand new products. We've got Adobe CC, which is the newest of uh, Adobe's Creative Suite, as well as the Cintiq Companion, which is Wacom's newest uh, computer Cintiq hybrid thing. It's really nice. Uh, so this is actually my first time in the field with a Cintiq Companion, and I brought it to Ringling College of Art and Design, which is right next to where I live, Sarasota, Florida. Uh, and at Ringling, there's this group called Fuse. It's basically an after-school figure painting type thing. Uh, and this is something I've been taking advantage of for a very long time, probably, probably eight years or so. Uh, I grew up in Florida, spent a lot of time in the uh, Bay Area, and probably ninth grade or so, I started skipping school and going to uh, figure drawing classes at Ringling, just for the, the extra hardcore art stuff. Um, so this is something I've been doing for a while now, but uh, most recently I haven't gone out to do it. Um, the new purchase of a Cintiq Companion was more than enough to get me out today, so uh, I definitely wanted to share with you guys. You'll notice uh, I'm painting with giant brushes. <laughs> I didn't do any line drawing. Uh, definitely not my style of, of rendering, actually. Uh, I find line drawing to be stifling. Uh, I never get it right. It always looks weird. So uh, I actually do something where I get big brushes and I make an arm out of one stroke and uh, scribbles and edit. And you'll, you'll see lots of that here. Uh, the fun thing about going to this uh, figure drawing session is some of the artists I get to paint with. Um, there's some ex-Disney in there, some ex-video game artists. Uh, there's students of Ringling and also alumni. There's some Atelier fine artists as well. Uh, really good group of people. Um, and I would call this playtime, actually. Uh, so for my free lance work, uh, I do traditionally you know, illustration or video game concept art, maybe feature film concept art. Um, but it's always really good to get back into the essentials and, and really start to study uh, from life. So, something I tr started out with, uh, you'll notice, was a, a gradient with the purple and the, the green and kind of all the colors in between. Uh, a good way to start, definitely throw in some flesh colors and everything like that uh, to start to mold your model. Um, but something I really like to do is work from light to dark, or maybe bring the dark, uh, sorry, bring the light out of the dark. Um, so as I got her first sketch there, I kind of molded her body around. I used Liquify to fix the shapes a little bit. Uh, the next thing I was able to do is multiply uh, the same copied layer, uh, which actually brought the value down, and I was able to erase out uh, and bring in new colors and new adjustments. As you can see, I'm on a Cintiq Companion. The interface is really kind of wonky uh, without a keyboard. With me, I have a Razer Tartarus gamepad, which is basically just like a little shortcut uh, button pad. Uh, I use that mainly because I'm uh, always on Mac. Uh, so every time I switch over to the PC, the Cintiq Companion is PC. Uh, the shortcuts kind of change just slightly, uh, and it drives me crazy. So. Uh, I invested in just a little gamepad where I could keep all the shortcuts the same. Um, Cintiq Companion is, is quite difficult without a um, keyboard, so perhaps you'll see me fumbling every now and again. Uh, one of the most beautiful things of this experience yesterday was being able to run into the studio, uh, pull out the Cintiq Companion, Photoshop is already loaded, and, I am, and I'm painting in no time. Um, Typically, when I go to these figure drawing sessions, I've got an entire oil set up. Um, I'll show up you know, 40 minutes early because I have, I have some extra cleaning to do on my palette. I've got to set up the paint and I want to get a good spot. Um, something that was really nice yesterday was just being able to walk into the studio, turn the computer on, Photoshop's already ready for me to go. Um, it's never been like that before. At least uh, when I would paint with tablets, there's lots of cords and setting up. Um, Cintiq Companion's uh, battery life actually lasted the entire time and then some. So you, here you can see 20 minutes. Uh, basically, I, I always try to spit out the entire painting in 20 minutes. Uh, and to be honest, my favorite part may be the 20 minute mark. Um, there's so much life and energy and maybe mistakes, but uh, the nuances of, 
of the experience with the model. Um, usually I would say that essence disappears uh, as I render more and more and more. Um, the history starts to, to go away. Um, but there's some good fluidity here that uh, you'll see me start to mold out, basically. Um, one thing I, I definitely focus on, I think, is the experience of being in the room with the woman. Uh, she's not just sitting there, but there's uh, a lot of interaction with atmosphere, with mood, perhaps music's playing. Um, and there's lots to capture in the moment of, of a painting a nude model. Um, so in this case, you might find uh, skin tones that vanish into the background, background comes into the skin. Uh, and it's a good way to get the atmosphere of, of the scene. Um, there's a warm light on the female model. Um, it's pretty close, pretty bright. Um, and over the course of this, I'll actually make the skin tone a lot warmer than it uh, should be. I think it's a comfortable way to, to make skin, is usually with oranges. Uh, I know for a fact the model was not orange. Uh, she made me more of this, this fleshy skin tone here, but uh, over time you'll see how it starts to get more warmth, and I'll exaggerate the, the intensity of the light that we're in. So over the course of the, your four-year degree at Ringling College, you get plenty of time in the figure studio. Um, we do lots of figure drawing, uh, which you can see by my liquefying that I didn't pay attention in drawing class, maybe. Um, we do lots of figure painting, uh, and I, I would say I was a little excessive with all of the figures uh, that I drew over the four years. Uh, definitely really good to study, study from life. Um, so here, again, multiply. I'm changing the uh, intensity of that second layer to be more warm like the light. And something that's really nice about this is I've added, I guess, atmosphere or mood to it, um, a dark mood maybe. Uh, and as I erase out back into my old painting, um, you'll see new colors appear. Uh, things start to get as intense as they used to be. Um, and it's almost like basically adding a fancy glaze uh, on top of your painting. It's something I do quite often if I'm, let's say, stuck or I need some extra texture or I need some new influential lighting, uh, new color. Basically, I can overlay it or, or do some sort of layer mode and start erasing out, and it's like I added an extra hour on top of the process, um, really with just a few, few moments of painting. So I've got a few different brushes. Um, I don't like to jump around brushes, but uh, I've got a basic round brush that's got uh, probably dots in it or something to make it look textured and bristly. Um, the next one is going to be a sharp chisel fade brush, which is the one I'm using right now. It can be very sharp, um, which definitely helps. And then the last one's going to be a soft round brush. I would say a lot of figures uh, could be very soft, and it's it's a dangerous place to get into because you don't want a, a marshmallow or a, a cloud human. Um, so it's definitely good to, to get those soft edges and then go back in with a tight, um, very sharp brush uh, and just start to hack through it, and bring the reality into it, uh, and with just a few strokes, you know, a nice glare and a bounce light. Uh, looked like a ball at the moment at the earliest stage, but uh, just a few hairs crossing through it uh, really brings it to life. I spend so much time always worrying about brushwork. Uh, I would say I prefer oil painting over digital painting, um, but they definitely all feed off of each other. Uh, as soon as I jump into Photoshop, I'm thinking about my oil palette, uh, and then as I paint in oil, it's probably the same thing. There's so many tricks and things that I've learned from Adobe uh, and their products and growing up in that kind of universe that I actually can bring it over to uh, the oil painting world. So my paintings seem to, to almost look the same. Uh, I'm getting to the point where I can almost mimic oil, as you see here, uh, and then some of my oil paintings can look pretty digital. Uh, most of my knowledge comes from oil, though. You know, you go to the studio and you spend so much time um, painting from the model, 
Uh, teachers sometimes won't really let you bring a computer in, so which which is okay with me. Um, but I think it's that those moments, spending time uh, in front of the figure, um, studying life, questioning life, um, and for me, it's really good meditation. I'd say I usually talk to myself. Um, I've, I create a weird language where basically I describe the type of shape or the type of color with these weird words. Uh, and it's almost like I'm explaining to myself what needs to happen. Um, so there's a lot of concentration that's in this process. Um, and a lot of trying to point out and describe what it is that I'm seeing, what it is that needs to happen. Um, so I'm using a smudge tool here. You can see just kind of wiggling it around to, to get more of a soft transition. Um, something I'll use every now and again to even draw, like you see right there. I'm still just uh, wiggling color back and forth to soften. Uh, and there's a lot of warmth in here that uh, the figure model didn't have. Um, I would say her tan line probably could have been a little cooler than you're seeing right now. Um, but there's something about the warm light that I really wanted to capture. Uh, I went overboard for sure, uh, but just to go extra overboard, I'm going to create a overlay layer and start to bring out some light. Here I'm actually on the overlay layer and I can use a dark color to put in shadows. Here I'm using skin tone, flesh tone to lighten things up. Look at that warmth that comes into there uh, just with a simple addition of some uh, overlay. A little warmth into the hair and it's kind of like the bounce light or, or making sure that the the lighting scenario that you're in has its influence across the entire painting. Um, so you can get shadows, you can get bounce light, and a lot of different effects just with an overlay layer. I'm hoping to do a Cintiq Companion review um, so that you can actually see what the product looks like and see how it works. Um, I'll be able to tell you <laughs> all the cool things, all the bad things, and whether or not you should even buy it. Um, but for now, this was just a really nice first attempt of uh, getting out and using the product really just going nuts with it. This is a 80 minute video, sped up to 14 minutes. Um, basically the model will get up and move every 20 minutes or so, so you get a break to um, you know, step back, talk to your friends, and, and see what people uh, are doing around you. It's usually really inspiring. There's, there's a lot of really good artists that uh, hang out at the Ringling campus. I think I started Photoshop painting when I was in ninth grade, probably the first time, maybe eighth grade, I don't know. Um, I think it amazed me because there was the smudge tool. Smudge tool blew my mind, um, only because I was using Adobe Illustrator back, you know, back then. Um, I was really happy to have, have met Photoshop and I've stuck with it ever since. I think I began with round brush, hard round brush, and I stayed that way forever. Uh, until just recently, I started, you know, generating new brushes that simulate my oil painting. Um, but to be honest, I think hard round brush is the way to go. So yeah, I think most of my favorite parts are still going to be, you know, that purple, um, purple cloth that I really didn't touch since the very beginning. It's got all the life of that, uh, the experience in it. I'd say. I hope you enjoyed. Like I said, this is an 80-minute painting. Adobe Photoshop. This is Andrew Theo Filopoulos. I hope to make more demos, tutorials, and random videos very soon, so please subscribe. Thank you.